Hello, my name is Lauren. I bring to you my friend, Dr. Nabil Jabor, a distinguished professor with a doctorate in Islamics, to read to you passages from his book, Unshackled and Growing. In addition, a PDF version of the book in English is available to you for free on the website friendshippathways.com. You may also access past episodes there. I present to you the episode, The Two Landlords. The Two Landlords. When a person puts his faith in Christ, he's born again, according to the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Just as new babies are vulnerable and need help to grow, so do new spiritual babies, new believers in Christ. When a baby is born at a hospital, she's usually placed with other babies in a closed, secure room that is not open to the public. Often, the nurses who handle these babies wear masks to protect the infants from germs and infections because of the first few hours and days of the baby's life are critical. The same is true for the spiritual baby who has just experienced new spiritual birth. When a person responds to Christ knocking at the door of his or her life, a new struggle begins. In the first few hours, days, and weeks in the life of the new believer, the devil will attack planting seeds of doubt. The devil plays with our minds, asking these kinds of questions. How can that short prayer you prayed make you a new creation? No more a worm, but a butterfly. How can you face all the world throws at you and live victoriously? Are you suddenly going to get rid of the bad habits you have practiced for years? What about sins you might commit? What about your worries regarding the future? How are you going to handle the possibility of being abandoned by your family and friends? Can you face that shame? What can Christ practically do to help you? Years ago, I read an illustration that helped me understand how to deal with the devil and his constant barrage of attacks. Imagine that you live in an apartment owned by an evil landlord who is greedy and heartless. This landlord is well connected and knows how to manipulate the people living in his building. At the end of every month, he brings your bill, telling you it must be paid right away. You plead with him to wait a week or two, and grudgingly he agrees on the condition that you pay it back with high interest. Over time, the debt accumulates and you find yourself enslaved to this evil man. Then one day, a man comes to your apartment and rings the bell. When you open the door, you see a respectable gentleman. He introduces himself and tells you that he is the new landlord of your apartment. He bought the whole building, including your apartment, and knows exactly how much you owe. Then he really shocks you. He tells you that he has paid all your debts and that you can continue to live in this apartment the rest of your life for free, and he wants to be your friend. Then he tells you that he lives in the penthouse on the top floor of the building, and if there are any problems, to let him know right away. This illustrates our new life with Jesus. It is relatively easy for a new follower of Christ to believe that our debt has been paid on the cross and we have been forgiven if we have put our faith in Jesus Christ. It's also pretty easy to believe that we have been given the opportunity for a fresh start. 
But what is hard to believe is that from now on we are living for free. We know that we believed in Christ by faith, but when it comes to daily living instead of faith, we fall back on worry and hard work. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Colossae, as we see in the Bible, So then, just as you receive Christ as Lord by faith, continue to live in him by faith. How did the Colossians receive Christ? By faith, of course. He's telling them to walk with Christ by faith as well. Why is it so difficult to live by faith after opening your life to Christ? It's usually because the evil landlord returns with bills he claims you need to pay. When this happens, you have three options. Number one, to start a wrestling match with this evil man who's bigger and stronger than you. A second option, you argue with him until he produces evidence of your indebtedness to him. If you let him in, he will win the arguments one after the other. Although you are free, you will find yourself enslaved again to this evil landlord. The third option, to shut the door, choosing to believe what the new landlord told you. Send the evil man up to the penthouse to talk with the new landlord. Of course, he will not dare to go. The devil came even to Jesus, attempting to plant seeds of doubt in his mind. After fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, Jesus became vulnerable to temptations. So the devil came to him with doubting questions. Their conversation is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4 in the Bible. Satan said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It's written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The devil repeated the attack again and again, and every time Jesus used the same approach. He shut the door in the devil's face by affirming what the Bible says and refusing to listen to the devil. You can do the same. When the evil landlord comes to you with the bills and tries to enslave you again, you can refuse to listen to him by asserting your belief in the promises of the new landlord. In the next episode, we will address them. Mm -hmm.